everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is ep episode two of the Unfinished Swan, and I'm going to let the narrator talk for a moment. Monroe scrambled out of the water and found himself in a massive city with no sign of the swan or anyone else. Well, except someone's enormous pair of feet. These were attached to a giant who could have been a big help in catching the swan, but unfortunately, here was the laziest giant who had ever lived, and it was his day off. Having celebrated in his usual way, he was now sleeping it off and quite unable to hear Monroe yelling. While he was looking for a way to wake the giant, Monroe noticed something even better. A floating ship. This game is absolutely beautiful. I got this game on the PS3 uh, like two and a half years ago for like fourteen ninety nine. I'm happy I got it for free with my PS4. And it's fun to play this again for the first time in a long time. Just exploring this. Basically, Monroe, uh, the character we're playing, is on a quest to find the king. Or at least, he didn't. Uh, he, at first, it's following the swan, but... Typically, he's following the swan to get to the king. We keep hearing about the king throughout this game. Before he discovered painting well spun pot, so when his subjects complained that his new city was too austere and that there was nowhere to relieve themselves, the king ignored them. But when they started relieving themselves in his pots, the king hastily built them a sewer system. For some reason, the video censors itself right there. Despite me recording it, it edited out the part where the king said he was a potter. Alright. I love the whole black and white and a little bit of color here and there. That it's beautiful. Water is is interesting as well. It's almost the same color as the Sometimes the giant wondered about where all the people in the city had gone. Mostly he worried they might come back and ask him to clean their gutters or put out their fires. But they never did, and that was why the giant, who was the laziest that had ever lived, was also the happiest. As the area itself. Uh, I just wanted to be quiet for a moment so the narrator could read that part of the story. Alright, let's go in the in the dark tunnel. Um bats. Alright, let's keep pushing forward. Scaffolding. Let's go on up. Keep pushing forward. Alright. As you can see, this ladder right here, it can be difficult to grab it. But I got it on my first try, which is good. 
an outhouse. <laughs> Up the ladder. It's funny the ladders are yellow while everything else is bland and white and gray. And of course the, the levers are red. Red and black. Hit it one more time. Yep. Let's go get it. All right. You see the epic jump of Monroe. This kid is actually pretty brave going in into this world that he's never seen before. If I was Monroe, I'd be scared because I've never been here before. But for some reason, this world is awesome. Basically, you're walking. As the city filled up with people, the streets filled up with garbage. In a fury, the king painted over the roads with a canal, which swept away the trash along with some of the slower children. But the water brought something else. A horde of vines which began covering the city. Uh, in a city designed by one man, the king. I like it, he doesn't have a name. He's just known as the king. The only one who has a name in this game for some reason is Monroe. The unfinished swan. It's just called. The unfinished swan. All right. Sorry about that. That was a car in the background. Okay. Go up the vines. Beautiful. I bet these must have been fun to program. at the swan weights above just when you're within inches of grabbing him all right he's gone okay now I know my fate if I fall in the water keep pushing forward Yeah, this is not a war game, but of course, uh, it's fun to say, keep pushing forward. I love this simple art style. It's beautiful. Okay, sorry. This is the tenth time I said that. Let's go for something else. What a whale of a vine statue. Okay, that was the dumbest joke I ever heard. But it's just Let's keep going. He's uh the swan's just right there. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to make it. Oh no. The swan got away. People are wondering, 
where the people went. Yeah. A long abandoned kingdom. Nobody lived here. Let's hear another story arc. Unlike his nicely trimmed hedge maze, the vines refused to stay where the king wanted them. He ordered his subjects to pull up every vine they saw. But the people were getting tired of the king's endless decrees, so they secretly began watering the vines whenever the king wasn't looking. Just looking for the, uh, those vines so I can traverse the environment is important. In chapter one it was black paint. Now I'm uh, shooting out water. Keep following the goose of feet. Yep, yep. Beautiful seawall. As you can see right there. Okay. The king hated the sea, and all because of his very first castle. It was the only one he had ever come close to finishing, and it took him a single day. But then the tide came in and washed it all away. He vowed that someday he'd build a kingdom that would last forever. All right. Gotta make these cool jumps. First person platforming game. I like it how this game uh, uses mechanics such as platforming, traversing. Uh, I don't think that's a thing, but. But. Trying to find a way across uh, to the floating ship. Or flying ship. Like, how is he throwing water? Like, I know it's a paintbrush, but come on. Eh, don't worry. Look at all these vines. They must have been really hungry. They were hungry. The vines were hungry. Ah, uh, yeah, something like that. This game is genius. My only gripe is that there's still some very unanswered questions. And I'll talk about that more at the end of the game. The vines were slowly burying the king and his city. No matter what he tried, the king couldn't stop them. So he decided to create something that could. He mixed in paint thinner, malice and snot, and soon had the outlines of a pretty horrible creature. 
But it wasn't until the thing began to coil its tentacles and snap its jaws that the king understood what he had made. And for the first time in his life, the king was a fantastic monster. I'll talk about that uh, later. Now to climb up here. And let's, uh, how is he climbing this pipe? It's a good question to ask when you don't see any struts like a ladder. Yeah, I got a machine gun. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, man. Yeah. I think if you find all 30 balloons in the game, that are hidden in the game, you'll get this hose that you can use indefinitely an unfinished swan, which would be awesome. I'm still looking for the last uh, balloons. finds the traverse. Even half finished, the creature had no trouble swallowing up all the king's soldiers, half his zoo, and three peppermint gazebos. It was only with the help of his pet hippo and the giant that the king was able to force it into the sea. And though the water remained black for years after, the creature was never seen again on shore. All right, let's uh, get to the next area. I wonder what the king's gonna think uh, after I put more vines in the city. Well, let's just leave that uh, detail out when I meet him. floating on balloons. Within a short time, the king's subjects had all moved away, except the giant, who was quite loyal and also very lazy. Who created the giant? Did he create the giant, the king? obstacle. Just jump on these balloons and we get to the ship. Monroe waved goodbye to the giant and set sail. But no matter how fast he went, the swan was always just out of reach. And not for the first time that day, Monroe suspected he was being led somewhere. Then they flew into a cloud Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be coming with part three tomorrow. You guys all have a good day. Adios.